thousands of dogs to be rescued from a breeding facility in Virginia. We've been following their journey to find new homes, but tonight we're taking a closer look at the legal parameters that allow facilities like that one to operate in the first place. KUSI's Hunter Sowards has more. So many have been shocked and outraged to learn just more details about the investigation that went into that Invigo facility there in Virginia. They say that they hope this is something that will help step them in the right direction because we know that this is just a drop in the bucket when compared to other massive wide scale operations happening across the US, whether it's dogs, hamsters, pigs, cats. Advocates here say this should sign a spotlight on what needs to change. It's a story that gripped the nation. And now 4,000 beagles spared a life of animal testing. After a federal judge approved a plan to rescue and relocate the dogs. These beagles that Lauren is holding uh, have, have made national attention, 4,000 of them. And now it's uncovering the truth about the massive network of animal testing and breeding operations across the United States. I'll still talk to people and they say, we definitely still don't do these things to animals, right? And I, you know, have to share some of the examples I've shared with you of what's going on behind closed doors. Finding out about this is terribly upsetting, but it also getting the national media that it has. It's really brought the situation to light for people. The Helen Woodward Animal Center, one of the many shelters working to rehome the 4000 rescued dogs. I know that they are doing a business that is legal and yet what is illegal is the inhumane treatment of these animals. And because they have so many facilities, it's difficult to believe that there will be checks and balances at every single one of these thousands of facilities. This is just one of roughly 10,000 animal breeding and testing facilities licensed by the USDA. Most operations are subject to just once a year checks by inspectors. The regulations that are laid out by the USDA are really minimal standards that you or I would consider cruelty standards. You're allowed to keep animals in tiny cages all day long, never let them out for exercise never really give them much human interaction. The National Anti-Vivisection Society works to end the use of animal testing in all forms of research. Meredith Blanchard is NAV's senior advocacy and policy manager. We use animals in research because we've always used animals in research. And I think many people can agree that that's not a very strong defense. I think there should be, and there will be, based upon what's happening right now, um, probably a lot more awareness and a lot more people looking into what they are, what mascara they're wearing and what eye drops they're using. Despite the Invigo facility in Virginia being shut down for animal cruelty, they will not face further civil action or monetary penalties. In fact, the USDA renewed their license for another year, approving them to continue operating other facilities. Why is this something that has taken 4,000 animals being pulled from a facility for people to be outraged? Oh man, that is a great question. And I would say it all comes down to transparency. All of this is being done, you know, behind closed doors. Reporting requirements are minimal. The breeding of animals for testing and research is legal in all 50 states. California is considering a bill that would essentially end the use of dogs and cats in pesticide and other chemical testing, again, with some exceptions. Despite California being the first in the nation to enact a bill banning the sale of cosmetics tested on animals, advocates say even that has loopholes. That is a great step to take. There are, like I said, a lot of exceptions in these bills that will allow for cosmetic testing to continue to be done and for those products to be sold in states like California that have passed these laws. Um, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. She says the Invigo facility and its 4,000 beagles, just the tip of the iceberg. Advocates are calling for more transparency in the reporting process, but also calling on the USDA to harshen their penalties for facilities that have these kind of egregious errors and abuse being done. As for part two of this special report, we're going to take a look at the alternatives to animal based research and why the National Institute of Health is something that NAV says they have their sights set on to hopefully encourage them to funnel more of that funding into finding those alternatives that would be safer, not only for humans, but for animals as well. Reporting in Balboa Park, Hunter Sowards, KUSI News.